This is an Exa Special, episode 25, Apple iPhone event 2013, on Tuesday, September 10th, 2013, and now beautifully, unapologetically plastic. This episode is hosted by Ryan Rampersad with Brian Mitchell. So here we are for the, what is this? This is the iPhone event for 2013 from Apple, and uh, we just had, uh, what, an hour and a half of fun? So much fun. Yes, uh, two iPhones worth of fun, actually. Double trouble. Uh, and, and how many colors is that? Is that like uh, eight colors of fun? That's a lot of fun. Yeah, five for the 5C and three for the 5S, I think. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good, then. So we probably should uh, talk about some of the things that happened during the event here. Uh, so what should we start off with? Let's start off with some dates. Okay. Then we can talk about I don't know. That sounds uh, good. So- iOS 7 will be released next Wednesday on the 18th. Um, the Gold Master was released to developers today. And so do we know if um, that is for all devices that are supported, so iPhones and iPads? Uh, I believe it's uh, iPad 2, or no, iPhone 4 and above, and I want to say iPad 2. I think it's iPad above. 2 and above, yeah. Yeah. So then it's going to be a simultaneous rollout, so it's not going to be like uh, iPhones first and then iPads, it's all at once? That's good. I believe so. I haven't heard otherwise, so... That's good. Yeah, and then uh, pre-orders for the new iPhones will start on this Friday, the 13th, and mm-hmm. they will be released on the following Friday, the 20th. That's so, pretty, pretty good. You know, it's expected. That's just a week or so away. Standard rollout time. You know, yeah. um, you know that, that, that I would be okay with that. I, I imagine that stores will be pretty busy. Now, do we know if you order on the 13th, if you'll get it delivered for the 20th? I don't know. Well, if it's anything like my experiences last year when I ordered my iPhone 5, I got up and it was, what, I think 2 in the morning when, this, when it opened. Mm-hmm. And within, I want to say, 40 minutes, it was sold out until right. the next week. Yeah. I'm sure so, that'll happen again. Uh, they always do yeah, that. Yeah. Well, so we probably should talk about those new iPhones that you could pre-order next or on Friday. So yeah. we could start with the iPhone 5C since that's cheaper. Yeah, and this uh, the 5C makes the iPhone 5 obsolete or not obsolete, but not sold anymore and not a current product that you can find. Um, well, you know, it's really funny. So in, in the keynote, um, Tim Cook said like, well, in the past, we've always... Whenever we've introduced a new model, we've kept the old models on the lineup. And this year, we're not going to do that. We're doing something different. And it's funny because, really, this is still the 5 in internally. With, yeah, with a few yeah. slight modifications. Right. Yes. So, yeah, it it now has a plastic case on the, is the back, and it can come in colors. Um, the colors are, there's a blue, a green, a yellow, a pink, and a white and and strangely, there's no black option, which I find to be very bizarre. Yeah, I'm I'm guessing it probably has something to do with the 5s is black, and they want to leave some towards there. Or I don't. Or maybe iOS seven will doesn't look as good with black because they have the wallpapers come matched up. Yeah, you know, maybe that's true. Um, but if you look at the white wallpaper, it doesn't look that yeah. exciting. I mean. It, it's it's a wallpaper with a little bit of texture in the background. I don't I don't know. I mean that that's okay, I guess. But they offer a a black um case for the device. They so do. Yes. That's a strange omission, I guess. Um. So speaking of cases, uh, they came up with some cases for the five C. So of course the whole device is plastic. But then you can put a case around your plastic phone that's made out of plastic. Um. What do the cases look like? Um. Well, they're they're made of silicone and they cover the sides and the top. But then on the back, there's a grid of holes that's five wide by what is it, uh, seven long or seven down. So it's they're they're holy on the back. And that would be for the iPhone five and the iOS seven. Or yeah, the five C. Yeah, I know, but it's funny because five wide yeah. and seven down. Uh, I see. So uh, yeah, and they go for thirty dollars on top of the phone. So. A third of the price of buying a new 5C on contract. Isn't that sad? Yeah, that's a little bit of a premium there. So why do you think they decided to go with the holes on the back? Is it really to uh, just let you see through to the native device color? 
or do you think it's like for reducing heat or something like that? Well, I feel silicon kind of would or would hold in the the heat. I don't know. It, a case isn't going to be as thermally good for your device, but I think part of it is to show the color because it the cases are all colored, so they kind of clash or complement each other. Mostly from, just clash, from what I can tell. Yes, there's there's the the green and yellow combination that just doesn't look very good. I mean, the only ones I really like are the red and white, the white and white, the black and white, and and everything else uh, just isn't so good. Yeah, I like the the orange and yellow or the yellow and black ones pretty good. Mm-hmm. They go all right with each other at least because the front the front of the iPhone is still black. Yeah, except for or even even the white one has a black bezel. So, yeah. Um, so there are cases, but also with the iPhone, um, since there's the plastic back, they now have steel reinforced frame, which gets added to the plastic before the phone is put in it. So they make, and the the plastic cases have a uh, glossy laminate put on it. Mm-hmm. Um, I say this in the video that we played later. Um, so that that adds some shine and some. Uh, apparently, they're supposed to be pretty durable or hard. Yeah, I think that's that's in a, a combination of the plastic and that reinforced steel frame that they're going to be using, which is also yeah. used for their antenna, which has a lot of new LTE bands. I hear. Yes, a total of thirteen. It's the most the it's the phone that has the most number of bands ever. The new iPhones, at least. So it's it's a great world phone. It's good. Uh, and then so. With the case, it's you know mostly an iPhone five on the inside, but there are a few improvements such as a better FaceTime HD camera, um, and I think a slightly better battery by maybe I think an additional twenty five standby hours basically. Nah. So yeah, not very much, and I never get two hundred and fifty standby hours anyway. So. Right. Um, so with with the plastic and the reinforced steel, the phone is. 132 grams, which is 20 grams heavier than the 5 or 5S. So, slightly heavier, but it's still 8 grams lighter than the 4S. It's pretty so impressive. You'll be able to notice it, but it won't be that bad. I've always liked the weight of the 4 line better than the 5 line, so I, I think I'd be okay with that. Yeah, it's... I The the weight of the 4 and 4S, It's it feels dense and like a solid, structurally sound phone. Yep. Mm-hmm. Whereas the lighter ones feel a little more flimsy, but... Yeah. Also, it's nice if you're holding your phone above you. You're not gonna. Your arm won't get as tired. But it's 20 grams. It's not that. No. Not that much weight. And the 5C is slightly uh, uh, taller and wider than the 5 5S by 0.6 millimeters. So you're not really gonna notice the difference. Mm-hmm. Well, it, the, the, sorry, yeah, I, I think th- I think those differences would be negated even further when you put the funny case on. So. Um, yeah. You know, nobody pays attention to those kind of things. I'm glad Apple has gotten out of that that period of time where they kept making new devices thinner and thinner and narrower and shorter and smaller just in general every single time and for no reason. So yeah, it's, we're it's, kind of at a plateau now. And I think the thickness of the devices now is just fine and I, thinner would scare me. Yeah, definitely. And the the 5C is a little thicker. It's 7.6 Millimeter, uh, sorry, 7.6 millimeters is the 5 and 5S, whereas the 5C is 8.97. So it's a little thicker, probably not super noticeable, but it it needs more space for the plastic and the mm-hmm. steel. Whereas the 5 and 5S has the aluminum as the case as well as the structure for right. the phone. Mm-hmm. So what do we know about the pricing? Um, well, it'll be um, on sale for $99 for 16 gigabytes when you start a new contract. And... 199 for 32 gigabyte on a new contract. I believe it's 549 off contract for 16 and 649 off contract for 32. I feel like that's pretty steep still. It doesn't feel like a cheaper phone in that respect then. Um, the contract prices might be slightly better, but not by a long margin. It's $100 cheaper than the 5S, so... Yeah, I know. Something. I, I know, but it's the same price as the five. Like, and it's still not not good enough. Yeah. yeah, I feel like this that that still locks a lot of people out from having an iPhone off contract. Yeah, yeah, off contract is still very expensive. Well, I mean, it's the same for a Galaxy or 
another Android device too. Well, yeah, not that, quite as bad, but yeah, but it it's still up there, right? Um, and of course, like all products that come from Apple, uh, Johnny Ives has to describe to you what this phone's message is. And what did Johnny have to say about this this phone? He says it's beautiful and unapologetically plastic. Yes, and so I will uh, play that video for you. The iPhone 5C is in many ways the distillation of what people love about the iPhone 5. It's simpler more essential, yet it's more capable and certainly more colourful. We believe the iPhone is an experience, an experience that's defined by hardware and software working harmoniously together. We continue to refine that experience, dramatically blurring the boundaries between the two, making it more powerful, more intuitive and ultimately more useful. iPhone 5C is beautifully, unapologetically plastic. Multiple parts have been reduced to a single polycarbonate component whose surface is continuous and seamless. I think that designs with a real coherence are the result of developing form, material and colour in unison, each element informing and in many ways defining the other, creating a significant and a meaningful design. Just as with its appearance, we took the same fanatical care with how the iPhone 5C feels in your hand. That sense of quality and integrity that's synonymous with the iPhone. That meant developing the design by creating a whole new structural architecture. It starts with a single piece of polycarbonate, into which we install a steel reinforced frame, creating a bespoke assembly that doubles as an antenna. We then add the rear plate. We then machine holes for the buttons, ensuring perfect alignment. And then the entire assembly goes through multiple finishing processes, including a clear lacquer hard coat that creates a durable and incredibly glossy surface. This whole process culminates in an extraordinarily rigid structure and a solid, dense feel that you would not expect from a plastic product. From the beginning, we wanted to design cases as colorful and as well-made as the iPhone itself. The soft, matte, microfiber-lined silicon is a very intentional contrast to the glossy, hard coat finish of the iPhone. The result is a case that extends and complements the product while offering dozens of colorful combinations. iPhone 5C is built on a foundation of features that people know and love. Like the beautiful 4-inch Retina display, blazing fast performance and console-level graphics from the A6 chip, the 8-megapixel EyeSight camera, and an impressive battery life. And now, we've added more LTE bands than any other smartphone in the world. And we've given it a new FaceTime HD camera for even better FaceTime calls and self-portraits. Beyond that, it comes with iOS 7, which includes new features like Control Center, AirDrop, and iTunes Radio. Combined with a ton of other great features, iOS 7 creates an experience that's even simpler, more useful, and more enjoyable iOS 7 is designed to complement the iPhone 5C beautifully. The wallpapers are color matched to the exterior, and the translucency inherent in iOS 7 carries this color through everything you do. This is just another great example of how we design and engineer our products in concert. It really is the only way that we believe provides the right experience. I think it's quite remarkable when something feels familiar and yet it's new at the same time. That's the iPhone 5C. It's the vivid realization of hardware and software together in one device. 
So, of course, there's uh, the bigger and better model, right? And that, that would be the 5S. Yep. And that is the same case as the iPhone 5, but it's got several, several upgrades to it. Yeah, really cool upgrades, actually. Yeah, it uh, starts with the A7, which is the next generation of processors. The 5 has the A6 as well as the 5C. Mm-hmm. Um, and with the A7, it's 64-bit, so they need to rewrite, applicate the operating system and all the main apps and the kernel and libraries and drivers. So what do you think the main driver for going to 64-bit was? So do you, what, what benefits does that offer the platform and users? Well, the main reason for 64-bit is additional RAM. But iPhone 5 only had one gigabyte, and I doubt the 5S is going to have more than two. Right. If that. Mm-hmm. So I'm not quite sure. I'm, I'm guessing they're trying to make it for the future and hopefully make the iPad transition right. go smoother for 64-bit. That makes sense. Because the iPad's going to be using more memory than the iPhone will. Mm-hmm. But then also the A7 is the M7, which is, I'm assuming the M stands for motion. Yes. It's, it's, it's got the um, accelerometer, gyroscope, and the compass in it. Uh, I think they're a little more accurate, too, I'd imagine, if they have a dedicated chip now mm-hmm. that they make. And that's basically for the parallax effect in iOS 7. And, which which is a big you know a big deal because that that you see that effect everywhere on the yeah. home screens and that would you know use a lot of power from your CPU or GPU so transferring that to a third or now another coprocessor would mm-hmm. be a good idea and it will allow for I think uh, they said this would be a Nike plus Nike plus Move app which yeah. will use some new features with the M7. Mm-hmm. So, so do we know if that processor's like always on or always listening, or is it just sitting there waiting unless it is actively used? I'd imagine it's used more than often than not. Okay. You know, especially if you're on the home screen. Mm-hmm. If an app doesn't require motion, I would doubt it. Okay. Although there's, you know, the, the music app has shake to shuffle. So oh, well, okay that, then. That could be something that it might use. I'm not mm-hmm. sure. And so the other big feature of the 5S is the camera. And... While the megapixels is still at 8 megapixels, there are several improvements. And um, externally, you'll notice the True Tone flash. So uh, that is a second LED, and they can flash it different colors. I think they set up to a 1,000 color combinations. Yeah, that's what they said. I, I would uh, have to study that very closely to see if it's true, but it, that sounds cool. Take a 1,000 pictures and count every single color difference. Oh, it's hard. I don't know how they measure that. They probably didn't. <laughs> just just pick the nearest thousand. That sounds good, right? Perfect. Yeah. And so that'll allow for a better... They used an example of skin tones indoors, um, and it seemed to make a good difference. Mm-hmm. And then also with the camera, there's uh, uh, slow motion. It's up to 120 frames per second. I'm assuming this is during video. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's 720 or 1080 or even um, They less said it would that. be um, 720. Okay. Um, for this, I, I think I think it's regularly just 1080. Otherwise, but uh, the 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 demand here is that you can get enough frames, and I guess 1080 is too hard. Yeah, I wonder if it'll be able to do 1080 at 60 frames per second. Uh, they didn't say, um, so uh, I'm not sure yet. Yeah, and there's um, some image stabilization. Also, I think for uh, faster motion pictures, I think was an example they used. Mm-hmm. And then there is burst mode, which would allow you to hold your thumb down or finger down on the camera button, and it would take up to 10 uh, pictures per second when your thumb is hold, held down on the button. Yeah, that's, so that's, that's pretty cool. And they have a, a, a new, unique mode to select the, the picture that you want from that burst yeah. mode, I believe. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, that's going to be a cool feature to see. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the f-stop for the aperture is now at 2.2 instead of 2.4. It's a little bit Which better. Would, yeah. I think it's the first change in that. I think it used to be 2.8 in the earlier iPhones. Mm-hmm. Back, you know, when the camera was 1.2 megapixels or something like that. Long time ago. Oh, yeah. And the the sensor is 15% larger, which would, I think, Phil Schiller said something, bigger pixels is, are better pixels or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so, uh, so the way it works is traditionally... Uh, manufacturers like to put in more megapixels and that that's fun and all 
but that doesn't make pictures better necessarily. That just makes the pixels that are in the camera's sensor smaller. So for each pixel you have to make it have more megapixels, you can just slice them up and make them physically smaller. But instead, what you can do, if you're Apple, you can make them physically bigger. So now the iPhone is using pixels that are at 1.2 microns in diameter or some measurement scheme. And so that makes the pictures better. So bigger pixels equal better pictures. Because they allow more light to hit it. Yeah, so it's all about the photons. All those photons. Yeah. And so, of course, there's the other big uh, feature, right? Oh, yes. Touch ID. So the home buttons will no longer have that app icon on the button. Isn't that a shame? Yeah. I think the 5C still has it, but the S does not. Hmm. Um, It's interesting. So, and that, of course, is a fingerprint sensor. Um, And so that'll allow you to unlock your device or authenticate iTunes or App Store purchases with your account. So it saves the need for typing in a passcode or password. That's good. So yeah, the- I feel like they launched something with, uh, or they, they are launching it with Mavericks. I think it was um, like Keychain of some sort, like Keychain iCloud? I- yeah, Keychain. iCloud Keychain. Yeah. I feel like this could be integrated with that in the future so that you could have the Keychain on iOS and so, you know, when you need to log into a website through Safari or into an app that you haven't logged in already, if you already have those credentials in your keychain, you could just authenticate with keychain, and then it would try to autofill it for you in the app. That would be nice. Yeah. That would be a good feature. Yeah. So Maybe what, what do we know about the sensor? Um, it's small. It's 170 microns thin. has a 500 PPI resolution, and it scans sub-epidermal skin layers and has 360-degree readability. So I don't quite know what all of that means, but... It sounds good. It sounds impressive. So I we, don't know what it means by 360-degree. Uh, so I th- that just means that you can put your finger on in any direction. It doesn't have to be straight up or, okay. s- or to the side. It can be in any okay, yeah. orientation. That would make sense. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Before the show, we were discussing what... Um, I don't know what were we discussing before the show. My thought has been bl- just eradicated from my mind completely. Okay, I'll come back to it if I remember. Uh, hacking it or using it in other well, apps? Yeah, so one of the things I was wondering before the show is if you, uh, during the keynote, uh, I'm not sure who said it, but they said that you could use multiple fingers. So you could put multiple fingers into the system and that would work. So you could use your thumb and your pointer finger and any other fingers that you'd like. But one of my questions was, would it be okay if you use someone else's fingers? In other words, could you have multiple people authenticatable? I'm sure you could fudge it with saying, this is my index finger. Oh, yeah. Else's, but... I guess that would be okay then. See, the reason I want to know that is, like, if you only have one iPhone, like, if you're married and then you want you want your significant other to be able to access your iPhone because, you know, it's just a public device, you know, it makes sense to be able to do that. But um, not having that ability would also be kind of annoying. Yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd imagine that you'd be, the people would be able to do something like that with the multiple fingers thing. Okay, yeah. And then, of course, the iPhone 5S also has the more LTE bands for worldwide connectivity. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the same weight and exact dimensions as the iPhone 5. Um, and it comes in this new gold color, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but I'll give it a shot once I see it. So. Yeah, so I'm I'm staring at the new gold color right now, just on the website, and I don't really think it looks that bad. I think it actually looks pretty nice next to the white. Um, you know, and I, instead of calling it gold, I guess what I would say is it looks more like the old style incandescent light. Like it looks instead of like LED white, it looks like LED yellow. It looks it looks almost nice. It looks like a warmer white. Yeah, it's it's got a nice shine to it. It's it could have been a lot worse. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm just so used to seeing, you know, white and black. black. Yeah. So anything's different, unless it's, you know, the 5C colors are seem a little more okay because they're so different. Right. But, well, and then there's this weird modification to the metal panel on the back of the 5S. So you have a 5, so uh, the, yes. the the metal back looks different to me. I'm not sure if it is, though. The Yeah, the, the 5... Kind of had a, it's, they call it slate, which is a black that almost seemed bluish sometimes. Mm-hmm. So I feel like you, you, you notice this and I feel like, yeah, the black is different colored. I'm, I'm going to see how it is once I go to an Apple store. 
Yeah, but, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not sure I like the... Because I remember seeing iPhone 5s with just black, and I, I really liked mm-hmm. that the, the tone wasn't so light. I really liked that dark tone. Um, and this new space gray tone just isn't yeah. good enough. It's not dark enough. So for the first time ever, and, and, and so like I've always been of the opinion that a white iPhone or a white iOS device made the device seem smaller because mm-hmm. the screen was encapsulated by this big white blob. But now for the first time ever, I think the black one seems smaller because it's encapsulated by this big white blob that's not white either. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I might just see him in person. Mm-hmm. I, my roommate's going to be getting a white 5S, I believe, so I'll be looking at that for sure. Mm-hmm. I think the uh, pricing is the same, as far as I can tell. Yep, uh, same pricing as the current yep. iPhone 5. Same so. pricing, same same sizes, no no surprises there. It's kind of unfortunate that they didn't try to do a 128 model and just uh, shift down 32 to be standard. Yeah, that would be nice, but... Maybe next year. Maybe next year. And of course, just just in typical Apple fashion, there's a new feature, and that is, of course, Touch ID. And so we have a video from Johnny about Touch ID. iPhone 5S is our most refined iPhone to date. It is meticulously designed, engineered, and crafted. But it's the remarkable innovation inside the iPhone 5S that sets a new precedent. It's not just rampant technology for technology's sake. Every single component, every process has been considered and measured to make sure that it's truly useful and that it actually enhances the user's experience. This care, this consideration extends to how we protect all of the important information that you actually carry with you on your iPhone. It's what led us to create Touch ID. Your fingerprint is one of the best passwords in the world. It's always with you and no two are exactly alike. So it made perfect sense to create a simple, seamless way to use it as a password. With just a touch of your home button, the Touch ID sensor quickly reads your fingerprint and automatically unlocks your phone. You can even use it to authorize purchases through our stores for music, movies, TV shows, apps, and books. Setting up Touch ID to recognize your fingerprint is easy, and every time you use it, it gets better at reading your print. It can read multiple fingerprints and read them in any orientation. The technology within Touch ID is some of the most advanced hardware and software we put in any device. The button itself is made from sapphire crystal, one of the clearest, hardest materials available. This protects the sensor and acts as a lens to precisely focus it on your finger. The steel ring surrounding the button detects your finger and tells Touch ID to start reading your print. The sensor uses advanced capacitive touch to take, in essence, a high resolution image of your fingerprint from the sub-epidermal layers of your skin. It then intelligently analyzes this information with a remarkable degree of detail and precision. It categorizes your print by one of three basic types, arch, loop, or whorl. It maps individual details in the ridges that are smaller than the human eye can see, and even inspects minor variations in ridge direction caused by pores and edge structures. Touch ID uses all this to provide the most accurate match and a very high level of security. All fingerprint information is encrypted and stored inside the secure enclave in our new A7 chip. Here, it is locked away from everything else, accessible only by the Touch ID sensor. It's never available to other software, and it's never stored on Apple servers or backed up to iCloud. Touch ID defines the next step of how you use your iPhone, making something as important as security so effortless and so simple. We believe that technology is at its very best, at its most empowering, when it simply disappears. One of the things people love most about their iPhone is they can take great photos with it. iPhone 5S lets you do even more with photos and video. It makes the world's most popular camera even better. Any digital camera is only as good as its sensor. While more pixels produce a bigger picture, we prefer bigger pixels because they mean an even better picture. With iPhone 5S, we started with a wider f2.2 aperture. That, combined with our new state-of-the-art 8-megapixel backside illuminated CMOS sensor that is 15% larger than before, means each 1.5 micron pixel 
can convert 33% more light into image data. This is all processed by the new A7 chip with 64-bit desktop class architecture. That's a lot of numbers that basically mean the pictures you take will have greater dynamic range with more details in the highlights and shadows and less overall noise in the image. A really great sensor is only the beginning of how iPhone 5S takes really amazing photos and video. In low light, iPhone 5S uses the new auto image stabilization. When you press the shutter, it imperceptibly takes up to four very quick photos, intelligently merging them to reduce blurring from camera shake and subject motion. And in really low light, it uses the all new True Tone Flash iPhone 5S measures the color temperature of the available light, then fires the white and amber flashes together in just the right ratio to create a balanced image. The colors in your photos will look truer and your skin tones more natural. iPhone 5S also has some fun new camera features, like photo burst mode. It continually captures at 10 images a second when you hold down the shutter. Advanced algorithms help select the individual photos or sequence of photos you might like best. And the new slow motion feature lets you shoot HD video at 120 frames per second. You can then select the specific section you want played back at quarter speed. All these features are the result of hardware and software working together so seamlessly that they essentially become invisible. So all you have to do is concentrate on taking a great photo or video and let iPhone do the rest. So what, what else should we talk about here that happened during the event? Well, they, before they talked about anything, they, they mentioned iWork, which they uh, went over a couple features, I believe. Um, so that includes pages, keynote numbers, and then they also added iPhone and iMovie. And they're making all of those apps free when you buy a new device. I think they say qualifying devices are purchased September 1st and later. Oh, that's pretty good, though. And that's saving money. Keynote pages and numbers each used to be $10 a piece, or still are, and iPhone and iMovie are $5 a piece. So Yeah, so it's a good savings there, you know, $40 savings. And if you own an iPad... On top of the iPhone that you might be buying, it'd be oh, right. a big deal. Yeah, definitely, because I think there are multiple versions for that. Yeah. Well, I think it's really interesting that they're going to transition to the iWork being free now so late in the in the iPhone, you know, in the, I, the iOS existence, because those apps have been there for years. So I think it's yeah. interesting that they're going to do that now. Um, I also think that it was funny that the icon art for the, uh, you know, iWork app line hasn't been updated to reflect to the iOS 7 are, yeah, you know, I'm design. right now. I'm looking at the iPhone 5 specs page on Apple site, yep. and they, they show built-in apps and free apps from Apple. Yeah, and all of the built-in apps have been redesigned by Apple, and you know they're the new flat look and things. And all of the free apps from Apple look the same, except for Find My iPhone. What about trailers? Is trailers has trailers always been there? Um, they came out with trailers maybe a year or two ago. Okay, because I I've never actually seen any human being actually use the trailers app. Ever. I've, I've used it. It's, it's pretty handy, actually. Oh. Well, I like it. Okay, good then. At least in a city when there are theaters. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. Uh, you know, there it, it, it seems weird that they're, they have released two phones today, the 5C and the 5S, but there's a third phone that we didn't talk about. They're still selling the 4S, or free 4S now if you sign yeah. the contract. Oh, I feel bad for you if you're buying a 4S today. You're crazy. What are you thinking? Yeah. I, I would not recommend it. No, I, I wouldn't either. That That's absurd and that's crazy. That uh, 4S is so slow and old now. Don't do it. Well, like, I I don't know. I have I have a 4 and a 5, and so a 4S seems all right to me. But once iOS 7 hits, it's a bit like... And there are several features that the 4S can't do on iOS 7. Right. So. Well, and of course, if you want to see any of the event in person, we have some links here to uh, some of the videos that we played. But of course, there's also the full and complete uh, version of the keynote available on the Apple website. And I think it'll be available on iTunes in that um, I, in that uh, Apple podcast section eventually. Yeah, um, I'll be watching it probably later this evening. Yeah, me too. So I think th- um, you have some uh, quotes that you would like to uh, share. Yeah, I've... Found some tweets, you know, reading the couple hundred that I've seen today. Mm-hmm. So this one person, let me pull up names here. Um, 
I have links for it too. So Sebastian uh, DeWitt said, yay, random spec comparisons. The new iPhone 5S is 16,480 times faster than the Apple II. It's also, uh, let me get my places here, uh, 470,392,087 times lighter than an oil tanker. Wow, that is impressive. Very impressive. And then uh, David Huang says, uh, the new iPhone cases, and then he links you to a picture of Crocs. And, and you know, it, it, it's not even like the Crocs just have holes in it, like that would have been enough, but they're in the same colors. It just fits perfectly. I mean, come on. Yeah. And then um, and then Louis uh, says, RIP, home button symbol, heart. You know, it, it is really weird that they're getting rid of that um, home symbol. Like, that was an iconic symbol for years. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I I guess I don't I don't I don't feel too attached to it, but it's it's it, you know everybody knew what that button was. Yeah, I feel there was a little bit of uproar when they released the new iPad Nano last last fall, with the home button was a circle instead of oh yeah rounded square. You know, I I feel like they did that on purpose because it wasn't a real iOS device; it was fake, and so then they got away with it. But the yeah. iPhone is the true iOS device, so it's a little bit different. Yeah, definitely. So overall, what did you think of today's announcement? Was it was it, was it enough? Was it what we were hoping for? I feel I think it it filled what I was looking for, even though most of the things had been leaked or rumored. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the five C is good to have. It it looks a little cheaper, but it also looks more fun. And I feel like that's that's good for a cheaper iPhone. Um, I feel like it will encourage people to buy that over the four S, mm-hmm. which is very good. Um, and then the the five S. I think the camera is a great improvement. I I I would love to have slow motion like that. That's my probably my one of my more favorite features of it. And then sixty four bit and the A seven. The speeds can be up to twice as fast. I think that is going to help tremendously with iOS seven and beyond. Um, and they are they're also saying during the keynote they had a slide that shows the progress of the speeds of the iPhones and the. The 5S is fi- up to 56 times faster than the first iPhone. That's pretty. That's a pretty big improvement. I think it's, it's ridiculous. And so, do we know? Uh, I assume this was just a plain A7 and not like an A7X or anything. Yeah, the the X's are. I'm guessing iPad only. With yeah. Just beefier GPUs. Mm-hmm. So if if, if the uh, iPhone improvements were already that big, which were pretty big. The uh, iPad improvements for the A7X coming later this year presumably will be also pretty big. Yeah, I I imagine that to be a big improvement as well. I feel like, especially with the iPad, they can't do as much with it as the iPhone, just mm-hmm. in terms of new features. So do you think they will add the but fingerprint scanner to the iPad? I do. I feel like... They have to? Will, yeah, I feel like... Like they have to, and it's we'll see how much it gets used here. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it's it's a good feature if it works at least, right? Um, and it seems you know that they could fit it into an iPhone, they could fit it to an iPad. Um, yeah. So I, I have a couple more questions. So let's say uh, you have an iPhone right now, and and I'm not telling you which one, but you have just an iPhone. What point would you say that you should upgrade to either the 5C or the 5S? Um, what do you mean, like from which iPhone? Yeah, or, right. Uh, I would say if you have a four or below, you need to get the 5S. Mm-hmm. If you have a five or if, uh, if you have a five, I would wait a year for the 5S. If you have a four S, I would either get the 5C or the 5S, or wait a little more and get the, the 6, I don't know. Yeah. I, the, I, the 4S is on that line where I'm not sure, although having, it's still a 3.5-inch display, so I feel like if your contract's up, get the 5S. Yeah, I, I feel like it's a little weird with that 5C there. Like, I, I don't know, like, unless you really want a lot of storage in your iPhone, like, for some reason you're really feeling crunched, that's the only time I would recommend the five C now. Like if you're if you're still going on contract and you're renewing right now from from any iPhone. Um, so obviously that would be four or four S or maybe even a three GS. But um, otherwise, I would always be recommending the five S for an upgrade. Yeah. When I ever talk about it, I I will 
push as hard as I can to have them save a little longer and get that newest one. Cause yeah, it's, it's just more the speed that it, I mean, 56 times the speed in over in seven generations. That's right. Exactly. A huge jump. Right. So my other question is, what does this do to the iPod touch line? Does, does the five C encourage people to not get an iPod touch or does it encourage more people to get an iPod touch because they still can't afford an iPhone, but they can somehow afford uh, an iPod touch? Well, you know, when you need an iPhone, you need a data plan. So that adds later price to it. But I feel like the iPhone five C, you know, it's got colors now. So it looks a little more like an iPhone iPod touch. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like the people who buy iPod Touches nowadays are people who um, already have an iPhone and they need another device or they're, they're younger people or older people who don't want a phone or a smartphone. Yeah. Um, but the iPod Touches are quite underpowered currently. Like the newest one only has an A5. Yeah, and, that, and that's of course because it came out last year with the iPhone 5. So yeah. it's still lagging behind. Yeah, I, I, I think, I guess the, uh, appeal of the iPod was that it, it didn't cost an absurd amount and it didn't have the contract attached to it, the data plan. And yeah. I, I guess it is, it's, I always hoped that the 5C would be between the prices of the, you know, entry level, uh, iPod Touch and the entry level iPhone. So, you know, between 649 and between 299, so somewhere around 450. And so then that would have been yeah. a compromise that, you know, I don't need a great phone, but I still want a phone. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Because the, the iPod Touches can't be very full-featured because you're not paying subsidized pricing for it. Exactly. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think that was a pretty good event. I had a lot of fun watching it today. Um, I think it's been a long time since we've had a an Apple event. I don't think there were any in the summer other than WWDC. Yeah, and there were none in the spring. Even WWDC didn't really introduce new iOS hardware. It was just MacBook Airs, as far as I know. Yeah, that was in the hardware. They they previewed Mavericks in iOS 7 and mm -hmm. MacBook Airs and 802.11ac, but that was about it. So then going forward, I think we have uh, the iPads to look to. So, of course, there's going to be a new iPad Big Edition and a new iPad Mini. Yep, I'm, I'm assuming that will be coming out later this fall. Yeah, I, I'm not sure when though. I, I I'm sure it's going to be before Black Friday in in November, but I'm not sure if it's going to be in November or if it's going to be in October. Yeah, and I've heard Mavericks will be re released at the end of October. Yep. So I'm imagining if they haven't released new MacBooks by then, they will at that event if yeah. they make an event for it. Right. I I w I've heard rumors that they would release it on um, the anniversary of Steve's death, but that would be a little oh. weird. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think this fall is going to be busy. Apple seems to fill up the fall and do nothing in the spring. Yeah, well, I, they've transitioned to that because I think they make a lot of money in, uh, you know, the holiday time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that wraps all of it up. Uh, thank you for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Where, where can we find you on the internet? I am on Twitter at, at bman4789 or on Twitter at, at tech4789. That's good. Um, yeah, that's my main place of contact. And, and you can find him there on the Twitter all the time, especially during Apple events, because he tweets a lot. This is the, the most I've ever tweeted during an Apple event, or at any given chunk of time. So It's good for you. Tweeting is good. Well, yes. And of course, you can find me, Ryan Rampersad, just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter, Ryan Amar, and of course on the Google+, Plus, where I'll be posting a lot of the links I wrote about here, there, later today, and, and, and throughout all time. Well, thanks for coming on. Have a good one. You too.